Dear friends of Worte, dear colleagues, I'm Johannes Lohaus, I'm the Secretary General from the European Water Association, the EWA. Europe is your next stop on your journey around the water world. EWA and WEF, we are working together since many years. Myself, I'm involved in this cooperation since 2001. In 2001, we ran our first joint conference together with our partners from Japan, the Japan Sewage Works Association. Since then, we have run in this series of conferences two conferences in Japan, two in the US and two in Europe. It is really a success story. When WEF asked EWA to contribute to this exciting event, 24 hours of water, we thought, oh, what to do? What can we present during this very special event? The answer is, we want to inform you about the latest developments on the topic on water reuse in Europe. The reason behind is that since May 2020, we have a European regulation on this topic. And water use is, because of climate change, a topic getting more and more important worldwide. My colleague from the German Association for Water, Wastewater and Waste, the DWA, Dr. Friedrich Hetzel, has prepared together with Professor Wanner from the Czech Water Association this presentation about uh, water reuse for you. And I'm very grateful for this. And Friedrich, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Johannes Lohaus, for handing over to me. It is a pleasure for me to give you some information concerning the regulation of the European Parliament and the Council on the minimum requirements for water reuse. My name is Friedrich Hetzel, I'm working for DWA and I'm the head of the Department for Water and Waste Management. So what were the drivers of water reuse in Europe? As we all know, we are facing climate change, so we have more frequent and repeated periods of droughts an increasing water stress in more and more European countries and over 70% of water is used in agriculture worldwide and the demand is even increasing. We see some lovely pictures which were provided by Professor Chiri Wanner and as you can see quite obviously we have a real problem with droughts in the last couple of years especially in 2018 and 2019. So, what were the limitations to use treated wastewater? Still, there is uncertainty concerning the environmental and health impacts of water reuse. And then, I think that's the main problem, public perception. Because we have religious aspects and also cultural acceptance to use treated wastewater. Then, for sure, we have this lack of legislation in the European Union and it's also a matter of price for water reclamation. So what is the potential for water reuse? We know that at present about 1 billion cubic meters of treated urban wastewater is reused annually and that's only 0.5% of the annual EU freshwater withdrawals. But we also know that the potential is much higher, six times the current volume. And as you for sure know, in the southern part of Europe, like for example in Cyprus and Malta, already reuse more than 90% and 60% of wastewater is used. Also in Greece, Italy and Spain, they use their treated wastewater between 5 and 12%. But it's clear that there's still a huge potential for further uptake. Okay, let's have a look at this uh, nice picture. Also, lots of thanks to Professor Jiriwana. We see here Europe and we see this big difference between the different European countries. 
For example, Spain and France. In Spain, they use 430 billion liters of treated wastewater, mainly for agriculture, but also for industry, for recreation areas, and also for urban applications. In France, they only use 8 billion liters, mainly also for agriculture, and only a little bit 12% for recreation areas, like for example, golf courses. So let me tell you something about the history of the regulation for water reuse. It started in May 2012 or even before and it was a stakeholder consultation which leads to the blueprint. One alternative supply option came up for water reuse, especially irrigation or for industrial purposes. And the reuse of water coming from wastewater treatment or from industrial installation was considered to have a lower environmental impact than other alternative water supplies, like for example water transfers or water from desalination. But as I showed you in the slides before, it was used only to a limited extent in the EU. And this appears to be due to the lack of common EU environmental health standards for reused water and the potential obstacles to the free movement of agricultural products irrigated with reused water. So it became quite clear that uh, EU legislation is urgently needed. And if you look through these milestones, you see at the end, in May 2020, this regulation 2027-401 came up with the minimum requirements for water reuse, especially in agriculture. But as I said before, treated wastewater was used before the EU regulation came into force and it was not against EU legislation. Take for example the Water Framework Directive. There, the complementary measures expressly include those for promoting the reuse of water. And also the Urban Wastewater Treatment Directive expressly provides that treated urban wastewater should be reused as far as possible. So from the perspective of the European law, the permissibility of reusing treated wastewater is limited so far primarily in the requirements of the ban on the deterioration of groundwater. The entry into force of the EU regulation 2027-401, so water reuse, leads to an extension of the European legislation in this issue. So let's go a bit more into detail. According to Article 3, we could see and figure out that the water reuse. The term water reuse in the EU regulation is to understand in a much broader sense. Means production, storage as well, supply and use of treated water. And also according to Article 3, urban wastewater which is treated has to undergo further treatment in order to become reclaimed water. So, the further processing consists at least from a disinfection stage depending on the use of the water also coupled with the filtration. So, this picture here will help to understand what I mean. We have several actors in the process and as I said, you have the urban wastewater treatment plan and the urban wastewater treatment plant is treated to the wastewater and then can discharge it into a river. But also there is a possibility to deliver this treated wastewater to a reclamation facility operator. And he has to produce water according to the minimum requirements of the EU regulation. And then he delivers that kind of water to the end user, in that case to a farmer. So as I showed you on the picture, there's a deal between the reclamation facility operator and the farmer. So it is a market-driven action based on the demands and the needs of the agricultural sector. 
in particular in certain member states that face water resource shortages. So in the next two slides you will see two tables which describe the minimum requirements for the water reuse. And we have here on the first slide the different quality classes A to D and you can see that uh, they depend from the irrigation method and the crop category. And here on the second slide in table 2 you see different water quality requirements for agriculture irrigation and you can see also the different thresholds for the reclaimed water quality classes. So is treated wastewater only an option for agriculture? Definitely not. The EU regulation so far only regulates the reuse of water for agriculture irrigation. However, this is, should not prevent the member states from use of treated wastewater for other purposes, including industrial and commercial use. So we can also use it for golf courses, we can use it for parks, for recreation areas and for the industry. So who is in charge to check the compliance with the regulation? Well, at the end of the day, these are the competent authorities in the member states. Compliance checks shall be carried out through the following means on the spot checks, monitoring data obtained and any other adequate means, whatever that means. So the regulation is there not really clear. But what happened in the event of non-compliance with the conditions set out in the permit? Then the competent authority shall require the reclamation facility operator and where relevant the other responsible parties to take any necessary measures to restore compliance without delay and immediately inform the end user affected. So in the center is the first contact person is the reclamation facility operator. So something very important to take with you is that the reclamation facility operator is the main actor in the whole process. His job is also to elaborate a risk management and a risk assessment. However, in the regulation it is not quite clear what has to be done. So it's up to the member states to give clear guidance for the reclamation facility operator to fulfill this task. As you can see here on the slide, it's a huge bundle of tasks he has to fulfill. So coming to the end of my presentation, what is the main purpose of this EU regulation? Well, the main purpose of this regulation is to facilitate the uptake of water reuse whenever it is appropriate and cost efficient, thereby creating and enabling a framework for those member states who wish or need to practice water reuse. Something which is also very important to keep in mind that any decision not to practice water reuse should be duly justified based on the criteria laid down in the regulation and reviewed regularly. Last but not least, I would like to inform you that the regulation shall apply from 26 June 2023, which gives, hopefully, enough time for all member states to prepare themselves. So thank you very much for your attention and goodbye. Thank you, Friedrich. Thank you, Gigi, for this fantastic overview. Dear friends of water, we are looking forward to meeting you again during WEFTEC 2021 or during IFAT 2022. For IFAT, EWA will prepare its European Water Symposium and I would like just to invite you today. Thank you for listening.